So we're starting with Ezra Hashem, the 15th shear in the series on Sugis. And up till now we were talking for about six shiurim on the Sefer Man Chacham, but I'm going to take a break from that now because it really looks like the rest of the Sefer, or a good part of the Sefer, is based on this one point that we spoke about last time. I'll just re- recap for a minute what, what it was, so we understand why we're not going to have to read everything inside. What, the, what Rabbi Yol Khan writes over there is he makes a fundamental assumption, which I don't think is correct, about the Satmar Rebbe. His assumption is that when the Rebbe says that Aliyah B'choyimah and uh, Dechikah Saketz is the Indian of Kfira, what the Rebbe means is that you're trying to do something that Hashem promised will never happen. You're trying to go and take over Eretz Yisrael, Hashem promised there will not be Cheris from Shibun Malchius before Mashiach. So, therefore it's Kfira. So that leads him to a big question. How could it be that the Medina actually is there, right? They made a Medina and it's still there. How'd that happen? So Rabbi Al Khan therefore concludes that uh, the Medina that's there now is not really a Medina. It's just like a Vada Arbaratzis. It's a limited Jewish uh, sovereignty that's not really sovereignty. It's not really freedom from Goliath because they still have to ask permission from the nations before they do things. That was his point. And then he says, Oy bazoy, what's the problem with the Medina? The Medina is not really Osir, right? So the next logical step is he says, yeah, in the, Khanami, the Rebbe never meant to Osir the Medina itself. He just meant to say that it's going to lead to something that's Osir. If the goal of Zionism is to make a bigger state that's more independent, that might be Osir. So that's all the Rebbe meant. The Rebbe meant just to Osir it because it might lead to something that's Osir. So then he, he, he goes on to say, uh, an even bigger claim. He says, Oy bazoy, it should be mutter to vote and to be in the Knesset. Because the whole reason why you shouldn't be in the Knesset is because it's, a, it's, it's heresy, it's, a, it's apikorsis to have a Medina before be a Samashiach. But according to him, the Medina is really not Osir. So then, why not join it? Who? Why not join it? This is Rabbi Al-Khan. I'm just <coughs> saying over what, what, what he says in the Hemshah that we're not going to read. <coughs> But uh, he says, therefore, Luchaya, really, it's, it's more to, to, go to, the, to go to the elections. And during the election, the only thing is, he recommends that a person should say before they vote that I'm voting on condition that the Medina that's there today should, be the, should, be the, should stay the same as it is. It shouldn't get bigger and more powerful. It should just be the same type of Vadar Baratsas that it is now. And then he says that uh, in those conditions, it would be more to the vote. And then he, he, he rails against those Satmar people who think that the Rebbe asked the Medina itself. <laughs> he says, if you guys think that the Rebbe really meant that the Medina itself right now is Kfira, then why was he Matir to live there Bukhla? When you live there, you're going to have to use their, their uh, utilities and their electric and their telephone, and you'll have to use their money, and all these things should be Kfira. So therefore he says, okay, he says, are you going to tell me it's impossible to live without it? It's not impossible. They used to live without electricity in the old days. El is up there, must be the Satan Rebbe never really asked it. But of course, what I was saying last time, all these things are kind of ridiculous because the Satan Rebbe never said the whole assumption that he said to begin with. What he said was that taking over, it's just relative, he says, it's a Maisev Kvir. And it's not that it's never going to happen. It might talk to happen, but the Torah said, don't do this. It's, it's Hashem's domain. It's not your domain. Uh, so, therefore, this whole thing falls away. We don't have to say that today's Medina is not a Medina. It really is a Medina. It really is freedom from Sheba Malchius, and it's Oster. And I, why didn't the Rebbe Oster people to live there and to, to use the electric and to, you know, to use the telephone? So, obviously, obviously we can't be so black and white about things. You know, you know the Rebbe knew that there are Yidden who are stuck there. And, 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 and they're, you know, they're living under the Medina. They pay for what they, what they use, right? It's not considered like you're, you're moida to the existence of the state just because you're paying your bills. You're forced to pay. You're forced to pay taxes. Another real kind is that, <laughs> that if, you, if you're working there, you get tax withheld from your paycheck and whatever. But uh, again, like, you know, honors, honors Rahman Patre. That's not what we're talking about. You can't go and, 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 and say, like, it's an all-or-nothing thing. If you're going to participate in the Medina in any way, all of a sudden, you're automatically a koifer. It doesn't work that way. But the Satmar Rebbe held that voting is participating in the Medina. All right. Anyway, enough of the Sefer Ma'ayin HaChachim for now. We're turning to a totally new subject today. And this is going to be about Ramosha Feinstein, Zechot Tzadik of Kaj Levracha, 
one of the greatest poets of our time. We're going to read a few selections of things that he said about the state of Israel and see how it lines up with Bayol Moshe, okay? So the first shtickle here that we're going to do is from uh, Evan Hoezer, Chelek Aleph, Simon Kuf Beis, the last paragraph. So it's this thing here, mm-hmm. the last paragraph of that shuva. Uvidvar she'eloscha im yesh mitzvah achshu avlad ber Yisrael ke haramban. Is it a mitzvah today to live in Eretz Yisrael according to like like the sheets of the Ramban? Do we pass them like the Ramban? The Ramban, of course, is the Ramban in uh, in Sefer Mitzvahs, uh, where he says the mitzvah that the Ramban left out, Yishuv Eretz Yisrael, right? Oi, ke Reb Chaim, Reb Chaim Koyin betoyis v'ksubas daf kuf yud. There ain't a mitzvah bismana zed. Reb Chaim Koyin says that it's not a mitzvah today, and Pashtus he doesn't mean that there's no mitzvah at all. He just means you can't do the mitzvah today because. There are too many uh, dangers that uh, come along with it because if you're going to go there to Israel today, you're going to have to keep Shemitah and you're going to have to keep Maestris and Truma and Mitzvah Satul Yisbaaret. It's going to be difficult and it's, the Oynish is it's just not worth it to live in Eretz Yisrael. No, Sam Rebbe had another side to learn that Reb Chaim Koyin holds that there's no Mitzvah at all. And therefore you're just living there for this chus of the Mitzvah Satul Yisbaaret and for that he said it's not worth it. Okay. So Dr. Moshe, he ne roi va poiskim. This is in Bizet. Where do you see that? Maybe it's in the Bizet. Hey, Bizman is there. Oh, we're gonna get to that. Ava poshet she ain zeh Bizman is there mitzvah chiyuvis. He says it's poshet that even according to the Ramban. Oh, I skipped something. Sorry. He ne roi va poiskim savri to who mitzvah. Most poiskim hold that living in Eretz Yisrael is a mitzvah, like the Ramban. It's not an obligatory mitzvah. Shal guf, shal haguf. It's on the it's on the body of the person. Meaning, it's not like putting on tefillin that you have to get up every day and put on tefillin, so you have to go there to Israel. It's not the pshat. The imkain, because if that would be the Ramban shita, nimtza It would come out that it's it's not allowed to live in chutzlarts. Mishum sheoiver alasei. Just like uh, any other mitzvah, I say, if you're living in Chutzlaretz and you have to go there to Israel, you'd be over on an assay. Kemoisha misha yilbash begad shall dalad convoys below tzitzis. Just like if someone would put on a four cornered garment and not have tzitzis. Shiyesh ister lilboish kadesh lo yavur al assay de tzitzis. That you're being over on an assay. So, same thing here. If you live in Chutzlaretz, you'd be over on an assay. For loy huzkar ister. And it's not mentioned in halacha anywhere that there's an iser. El al hadar be eretz yisrael she aser lotes. It only says it in Bav Basra that it's aser to leave eretz yisrael al manas lishkoin bechutzlarts in order to live in chutzlarts. You can go out to get married or to, to look for panasa or whatever, but you can't go go out al manas to live in the chutzlarts. Berambam hilchis perkei mimlachim halachates. There it's mentioned. Um, but it doesn't say that it's austere to, to, to stay in Chutzlarz. It just says that if you live in Eretz Yisrael, you're not allowed to go to Chutzlarz. V'gam kein hu v'adai eno yister lav. And even if you do go to Chutzlarz, you're not being over on a lav. V'im ha'ya yister gam le'anshei Chutzlarz. If the yister would be even on people who live in Chutzlarz, ha'ya lo'y l'arambam lo'y mar stam. Oster lishkoi b'chutzlarz. The Rambam should have just said that it's not allowed to live in chutzlarz. Ela im kein chazak be'eretz yisrael harav, unless the, the, there's a you know a famine in eretz yisrael. Mashma the rak liyosh be'eretz yisrael yesh iser. So from the Rambam's words, the Rambam says that, that you're not allowed to leave eretz yisrael unless there's a famine. It's mashma that the iser is only for the people living in eretz yisrael. Sha'astru chacham. It's only a, a derabanan. It's not nothing to do with mitzvah deraisa of yesh eretz yisrael because. Mitzvahs deraisa don't work that way. You can't have a mitzvah deraisa that's only on certain people, not other people. Everybody has the same mitzvah. So obviously it's not the mitzvah deraisa, it's a special derabonin that they asked leaving Eretz Yisrael. Al mitzad ho but as far as the mitzvahs asay, ain't a chiyuvis. It's not an obligatory mitzvah, el kishadar sham mitzvah, but rather when you live there, you're getting a mitzvah. But you're not mechuyiv to do it. I have another place where I explain the mitzvah of Reb Chaim. 
the kivan she'en a mitzvah yuvis. Since we've come concluded that even according to the Ramban, it's not really a mitzvah yuvis. So yesh vaday lihischashe bechashe arach betoisvis. Therefore, people should take into account before they make a decision to go to Eretz Yisrael. They should take into account Rabbi Yochaim Cohen's chashash that you might uh, not be able to keep the mitzvahs. Yimuchal lizar b'mitzvah satulis ba'aretz. Okay. Okay. So this piece where Moshe says that it's only a mitzvah. Uh, kiyumis, it's a mitzvah that you, if you're there, you keep your your mekayimit. That's uh, just like what the rabbi says in Vayol Moshe. Let's take a look. But he doesn't say anything. Does he uh, say? Does he like critique the real Moshe at all? Does he say? No, he doesn't speak about Vayol Moshe. He doesn't say good, bad, or good. No, I, yeah, I've never seen him say anything directly about Vayol Moshe. Did he go to his the Vaya? Um the Sam Rebbe's Levaya was in, yeah, it was in Ramesh's time. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. They, I know they had disagreements on other issues. They had disagreements, but they respected each other. I mean, not, I mean, I, mean, I'm not, I, don't th- I don't know if they had a disagreement on real Moshe. I know a lot of like, I think about a Mechitza. Yeah, the Mechitza, right. Okay, so just take and a look stuff. in, in, in Vayol Moshe. My Mary Yishev Eretz Yisrael. Um, base. My Mary Yishev Eretz Yisrael. Simon base. So there we go close to the beginning. There. The bottom of the page, the word Tom. Paragraph starting Tom. Tom Asheni. He's going on the Ramban and then say for mitzvahs. I don't says, think they liked Ugas Moshe, right? Well you know, he's the Poise of Gador. You have to you have to respect him. No, he knew, saying shas, he, knew, you know, he knew everything. Yeah. Okay, now Tama Sheni Kosov Shaladaito Izal. The second reason, the, the second thing that the Ramban says, um, is according to him, he says Kol Oisan Haf Logos Shalamru Chazal Bediras Eretz Yisrael Who Gam Kein Bishvila Mitzvah Divi Shavtem Ba. The Ramban says all the that whenever Chazal say in the Ksuba is a great thing about living in Eretz Yisrael Kol Adar Eretz Yisrael. Is kami, you know, is kami sheyesh loy alakam, kol me kol me she dar bechutz loy, kami sheein loy. All that stuff is all because of the mitzvah of the yishav timba. The imkain he mitzvahs asay ladoyers. Therefore, it's a mitzvah for all times. Mischayev kol echad bimenu vafilu bizman agolus. That every single one of us is mechuyven even during exile. The akavana pshuta. He says the Ramban is obviously meaning b'masha diek pekan loymer halashon mischayev kol echad. The Ramban says mischayev kol echad every single one of us. But like cost of stam shenit tavinu. He doesn't say we're commanded to do it. K'mash cost of b'tam harishin. When he says earlier about uh, the mitzvah during the zman habayis, he says nitz tavinu. The kivan dekan ma'iri b'zman agolus. Since he's talking about exile, shalaz bevada iefsher shialu kulam. He says it's impossible for everyone to come up and, 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 and live in Eretz Yisrael or conquer it. There's an oath against this. The Ramban himself uh, brings the Shavuos. Not only during Gaulus, but even during, during the time of Ezra, when the base of Mikdash was being built, the other countries around the world, uh, Jews didn't come up, only from Bavel. They were afraid that when, when, the, when, when Koyosh said, gave permission to, to people, for Jews to go back to Israel, he only meant Bavel. And therefore, and maybe when, when Yirmiya Navi says that, that after 70 years the Gauls will end, he only meant Bavel. Alright, so he says that even the Ramban, even during, during Bayashani times, the Ramban says the Shvu applied. So Kol Shekin during Gauls. So therefore, um, and he goes on, he says, Gam Hevesi Sham Masha Mavur Bdivay Ramban Ala Torah. There's also a Ramban. Uh, in Parshas Ki Savoy, Shahav Tachasay Shal Kosh Baruch Hu Shaloi Tia Klaya, this promise that during Gaulus there's not going to be a destruction, Hu Ach Im Yiyu Be'eretz Oyveim. This promise that Hashem is going to protect us is only if we're in the lands of our enemies. Vim Kain Al Korach She'ein Zeratzin Aboyer Baruch Hu Ve'ein Bozeh Mitzvah Ela Isr Chamer. It can't be that Hashem wants all Yidden to be in Eretz Yisrael. 
Valkane, therefore the Ramban and Sefer Mitzvahs, Diek, he's Medayek, Loimar al Zmana Golis, Mishchayev Kol Echad. He says, during Golis, it's every individual who's Mechuyev. What does that mean? Shachiv who rakal yechidim loy chas v'shalom b'choyma. It's only a chiv on individuals. It's not a chiv on the whole klal Yisrael. Okay. So this is one place by Yalom Moshe where he says that it's, it's only a chiv on individuals. And again, that's what that's. I, I think he's saying the same word as Yalom He's saying it's not a chiv. It's only a kiyumis. So individuals who go are mekayim the mitzvah. Mm-hmm. Also, take take a look in Yishevar Tisrael, Simon Kuf Yud Zion. So turn to Kuf Yud Zion. He, he goes back to explain the Ramban here. He says, "V'hinei kikain yesh lachkor ledas Ramban v'siyasei." According to the Ramban and those who are on his side, Shiyesh mitzvah the Ravais of Yishev Eretz Yisrael, Om Nam Zev Vadei Shev Bizman Golus Seinu. During Golus, it's Yesh Gzeir Se Golus Meitoi. Hashem made Gzeir that we should be in Golus. Kamavur Bekam Akroi Uvedivrei Chazal. She Gazer Kol Shbarach Uli Yesh Yisrael Mufuzarim Bechol Ruchas Ha'Elam. Hashem wants us in all of the directions of the world. Ve'Al Korchach Shev Bizman Golus Nidche Mitzvah Se Yishev Eretz Yisrael. It must be that the mitzvah is pushed aside, she'iyaf shalakayim shnehem, because you can't do both. You can't have all the Jews in Eretz Yisrael and have them all around the world. It's just two, 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 two opposite things. K'moy she'herachti l'mal, avo yesh lo'im rabbi shnei panim. But you can still learn two different ways. Oy, d'kivin she'higla kolish baruch v'yisrael, u'batal mitzvah sa'yishu v'eretz yisrael, nifka l'gam riyoysa mitzvah. Or you, either you could say that the entire mitzvah is gone. Shal yishuv eretz yisrael kamash kasev erashba beoisik b'mitzvah potter bin the mitzvah dahavit legamri kirshus kudash esoy bin dahavit potter legamri min adin v'loy dami lenenas. It's like hutra. It's totally not there. V'zed das haritva. He says that's why the ritva says shikasev demachmas gzeiras agalus hutar afalav shaloy lashuv the mitzrayim. That now that we're in galus, there's no ister to live in Egypt. Umutar afalach achilo leilich ladir mitzrayim. Therefore, it's, there's no mitzvah to live in Eretz Yisrael. Um, and then the next paragraph. And even though the mitzvah is pushed aside, he says the Ramban will hold this way. The Ramban will hold the mitzvah is not totally gone. There's still a chiv. He calls it a chiv. Al kol echad echad mi Yisrael. There's a chiyuv there. It's like ha- hanging in the air. El shenidcha mitzvah, but it's pushed away. Machmas oynis shall gzeiras the galus, but we're in, we're not able to keep it. Ukedas the taz boisik mitzvah potter the mitzvah daf shalom loshen potter enoy potter mitzad din ki chiyuv ram yalei veeno al el oynis shachman a patri ek moishe amru dechuya pirshrashi zal dolei havi heter legamri gomer. The Zehu Das the Ramban. He says that's what the Ramban meant. Bin Yagalus. The Afshe Bavale Machmas Gzeres Agalus. Ef Shashi Yechiv Lalus There it's still. It can't be. There's an obligation to go. Avalei Hufka Mitzvah Veino Potter Mitzah the Din. Vadayin Chiyuv Rami Al Kol Echad Yisrael. The Chiyuv is still there. Just we're, we we have no choice. We can't do it. El Anusim Manachim Shloi Lasus Chovuseinu Machmas Gzeres Agalus. And then he goes on. He says the Nafkamina is that according to the Ramban, if you're Mekayim the Mitzvah. Then you get a mitzvah. Okay? Mm-hmm. Since the mitzvah is not really gone, if you have a chance to do it and you're a you, 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 you gain, you have a mitzvah. Mashiach, and according to the other shita, there is no mitzvah. Okay? Mm-hmm. So he says, 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 And it's pretty clear He says, 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 a, uh, why would there be a change in the mitzvah? The Ramban and the Bizman are biased. The Ramban says clearly it's a mitzvah. So why would today it only be, why would it only be a, a, an, a, an optional mitzvah? Why would it change? Obviously because there's a Gzeris Agalus and there's a Shvua. Okay, so that's one Igris Moshe. Let's look at the next one now. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, so turn to the next page. And this one is in uh, Orachim, Chelik Dalit, Simon Ayin, Ois Yud Aleph. And it's the bottom here, here at the bottom of the page. Ois Yud Aleph. And all, this is a, a Shiloh 
that, a, a letter that was written to Ephraim Greenblatt, the Colonel of the Rav in Memphis, Tennessee, who um, but went to live in there throughout the end of his life. He was a Talmud of Ramosha and he asked many Shilas to Ramosha. So this is a, a, a letter with many different subjects in it. And Yud Aleph is about what we're about to read. He says like this, V'elu hanoisim l'Eret Yisrael, those who go to Eret Yisrael today, mistaber, it makes sense, she'af she'adayin lo nigalnu, even though we have not yet been redeemed, ba'avon esenu rabim, but em li kroya b'iri'as Yerushalayim, we should not tear kriya when we see the city of Yerushalayim. Me'achar she'hi b'chesed Hashem yisbarach b'nu yelatiferes, because by the kindness of Hashem Yisbarach, it's built up today, beautifully. The city no tear? What'd you say? You don't, you don't, you don't do Kriya? You don't do Kriya. Because there's, we're going to see, you do see background, there's, the there's, there's three pl- things that you tear Kriya on today. One thing is the cities of Yehuda, the Arve Yehuda. Mm-hmm. The second thing is Yerushalayim. And the third thing is the base of Mikdash, the Makam Mikdash. So, Ramayish is saying, in the Makam Mikdash, if you see that, you have to tear Kriya. People go to the Kaisal, they tear Kriya. But the, let's say you just see the city of Yerushalayim. Hmm. So he's saying not to do it today. Why? Because he says today, by the Chesed of Hashem, it's built up. So he's referring to the new Yerushalayim, not the old city? No, I think he's only referring to the old city. The tearing hmm. Kriya is only on the old city. Okay, so Benu Yelati Ferris is built up the Eino, and here's the key words, the Eino Al Kopanim Bishus Umois Akum. It's not at least in the in the uh, possession of the non Jews. Fitzarach Levarich. And we have to say that the, the, the he calls it the Brach, it's really a Pasik that we say, Are Kachecha Hayu Midbar, Yir Kachecha Vesifartecha, I think we're gonna see inside in a minute. But this Pasik so this that is we say in a statement then. He says, "V'tzarich levarich rak biru oisay makam amikdash." You only say the pasuk. I think it's a base kachenu v'sifartenu asher he lucha avosenu ha'ilus refas esh. So this pasuk that we say is only when we see the base of mikdash. Af kishiroi no oisay meirachik. Only even if you see it from far away, the kol shkin kishabayim lekaisal. And all the more so when you come to visit the kaisal, you should say this pasuk. U kishiroi are is Yehuda. When you see the cities of Yehuda, shehem birshus to umais. That are in the possession of the nations. And same thing if there would be a part of Yerushalayim that's under the nations. Even though it's built nicely, you have to tear Kriya. Okay? So that's a Zionist thing. Oh, so the Zionists want to say, oh, you see, Ramosha was a Zionist because he sees happy that there's a state of Israel. And he says, don't tear Kriya because it's not Bishus Akum. It's not under the, 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 the Palestinians or whatever. I think right? the Mizrahi rabbis say the same thing. So, um, could be. I don't know what they say, but this we're dealing with this today. All right, so what do we, what do we say to this Ramosha? So was Ramosha a Zionist? So let's take a look. I'm going to show you something very interesting. Um, turn to the next Maram here. Let's look at this halacha inside. This is the Mishnah Brewer, Tov Kuf Samech where this din comes from. Din haroya are Yehuda of Yerushalayim ve'amikdash b'chubanam. The 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 din for somebody who sees these three things: are Yehuda, Yerushalayim, and the base of Mikdash. Okay, haroya are Yehuda b'chubanam. Someone who sees the cities of Yehuda when they're destroyed, Oimer he says are kachecha hayu midbar. The your your holy cities have become a desert. The koyreya and he tears. Okay, um, so now look at the Mishnah Bura. Down at the bottom here, Are Yehuda, Veloy Are Yisrael, Veloy Chashivi Kolkach. Only Are Yehuda, not Yisrael, not the rest of the Eretz Yisrael, like Sarah Sashvatim parts of Eretz Yisrael, only the parts in Shevet Yehuda. Okay, base, Bechurbanan, when they're destroyed, Afilu Yosh Fin Bohen Yisrael. Even when Jews live in them, Kivan Shahayish Me'elim, Moishli Malayim, Mikri Bechurbanan. Since the Arabs are ruling over them, they're considered destroyed. Okay? And uh, so, reading this Mishnaburah, you would think, okay, that's where Moshe came from, right? Moshe saw the Mishnaburah. He's not Meshubba to the Mishnaburah, but he saw this, this uh, halacha that when, uh, when the Yishma'elim, when the Arabs rule over it, you, you have to tear Kriya. So, Zakhter, okay, but today the Arabs aren't ruling over it. 
it's the state of Israel ruling over it. So, okay, look, we don't have to tear Korea, right? Hmm. So it sounds like Ramayisha viewed the state of Israel as a good thing. However, um, look at the bottom. Base. He says, Beis Yosef, Ubach, Vishar Achroinim. Okay? The Makor is from the Beis Yosef, the Bach, and the other Achroinim. <coughs> so, got to look there. So turn the page. And here is the tour of Beis Yosef and Bach on this simon. Where? Well, we're going to say it. Wait a second. Um, let's see. Um, Turn, turn one more page, sorry, out of order. Here we go. I think, Horoya. The bottom of the page, the Torah says, Horoya, Ari Yisrael, B'chubanan, Oymer, Ala Rishayna, Shiroya. When you see the first time, you say, Ari Kachecha Hayu Midbar, the Korea. Okay, V'einu Tzarech Likroya, Oid Bacheris. You don't have to tear again when you see the other ones. Uke Shiroya, Yerushalayim. When you see the city of Yerushalayim, Oymer Tzion Midbar Hayasa, Yerushalayim Shmama, the Korea. Uke Shiroya, Beis Hamikdash, Oymer Beis Kachenu V'sifartenu, Asher Hilalucha Boi Havaseinu, Hayal Yisrael Fasesh. V'chol Machmedenu, Hayal Kharba, the Korea. Okay, so look at the um, Beis Yosef. Okay. Turn back one back to this page again in, in the Beis Yosef. He says, "Are Yisrael b'churbanan Oimer al Rishon Yashiraya Are." Back to here, Kadshecha uh, on the left side. Hayu Midbar v'Korea. So he says, "Memra the Rebbe Lazar Perak Elu Megalchin." Some Gemara Moed Cotton Chaf Gimel Elu Megalchin B'Moed. Yeah, right. Moed Cotton, the third parak. Chaf uh, Gimel Ella Shasham Kasuv. He says the only difference is that there it says Are Yehuda the Kach Heim Direi Kol Apoiskim. The tour, I guess, the tour said Haraya Are Yisrael, any Jewish city, and and the the Beis Yosef is pointing out that really it's not Are Yisrael, it's Are Yehuda. Okay, Vagam Rabbeinu Kasta B'Tur Yordei Asim and Shin Mem for Are Yisrael Dichsiv Hacha Lav Davka. Okay, he says, really in, the, in, in, in your day of the Torah also says the same thing. He says it's Ari Yehuda. And here he says Ari Yisrael, but it's Lav Davka. The meaning is we don't tear Kriya except on Ari Yehuda. Davka. Um, okay. Okay. He says, it says that uh, people came from Shechem and, and other places. They came they, from Shemroin and they, they and they were they, they, their beards were shaven and their garments were torn. And this is a, a pasuk in Yirmiyah. It's talking about after the korban, right after the korban happened. There were some people who were coming to bring a korban in the base of Mikdash, and they uh, realized on the way that the base of Mikdash had just been destroyed by the Babylonians, and they tore Kriya. Okay, they taught Kriya. So it says Havalon Lame Havalon Lamemar the Al Kol Are Yisrael Koirim. The Hohani Ayaris are Yisrael Haim. Beloy are Yehuda. He says, Lakhaira, you can ask Akashta that there they taught Kriya for Shem and for for Shiloi and for Shimroin, which were Ari Yisrael. They weren't Ari Yehuda. Says, that they didn't tear their clothing until they found they came to Hamitzpah. Shahimi Ari Yehuda. Okay, now let's get to the main part here. Listen to this part of the Beis Yosef. The high Ari Yehuda bechurbanim the Kamar, the high new Shehen Charevois the Aim Lahem Yishuv Kla. He says you only tear Kriya if there's no Yishuv at all. Aval im yesh bohem yishuv. If there is some kind of a settlement there, afal pi shehem bidei oiv digilulim. Even though it's a goyish settlement, hayanir lichoyer de'en sarach likroya. You don't have to tear. The efsher. Then he says the efsher the kol shehem bidei oiv digilulim afal pi sheyesh bohem yishuv bechurbanam mikri. That as long as they're in the hands of the goyim, even if they have a yishuv, they're considered destroyed. The chain iker. So he has two tzad. In first tzad is he says that if there's a yishuv you don't tear. And the second tzad is no. If there's a yishuv, but if it's under the non-Jews, then you, you do tear. Okay? V'chein iker. That's how the Beis Yosef concludes. That's how the Beis Yosef concludes. Okay, now let's see the Bach. 
back one page, and it's in the bottom three or four lines of the back. Okay, uh, towards the end of the line, who push it? Who? Third line from the bottom. Who push it? Who? The high are Yehuda, the Churbanim, the Kamar, high nuach. It's this back. Third line from the bottom. Who push it? Who? He says it's obvious to high Ari Yehuda the Churbanam the Kamar. This that we say Ari Yehuda when they're destroyed, Hainu Afilu Yesham Yishuv. Even if there's a Yishuv who there, Kol Shiyad Ha Umoy Shalat Tesalav the Churbanam Mikri. As long as the nations are ruling over it, it's called the Churbanam. The Ham Mitzpeh Mitzpeh. He says I'll bring you a riot because Mitzpeh. This these people who were coming to bring a carbon and they got stopped in the middle because they realized the base mix was destroyed. These people were at Mitzpeh. Mitzpah was a Jewish city. Shekaru Aleha Hayasham Yishuv Im Amrav Yehudim. There were a lot of uh, Jews living in Mitzpah at that time. Bekastim Anshe Milchama the Adain Bekastim Amrav Yehudim Bekastim. There were both Jews and Goyim there. Anshe Milchama the Adain Lo Yadu Heim Shenera Gedalia. They didn't realize that Gedalia had been killed. Vies kola Yehudi mashehay right all those Jews living in Mitzpah didn't know about Gedali being killed. Vies kola Yehudi mashehay itoy be Mitzpah. Oh, they didn't know that Gedali, Gedali I guess was in Mitzpah and he was killed, and and all the Jews in Mitzpah were also killed. But my advice is that they were that they were they were there until then, right? And the people who were coming with the korbanos thought they were there. And still they tore their clothing. Why? Because it was under the king of Babel. So that's why they tore Kriya. Yes, yeah, so I want to be medayik what the difference between the Beis Yosef and the Bach is. The Beis Yosef said, just one more time, the Beis Yosef said, is, 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 as long as they're in the hands of the non-Jews, even though they have a Yishuv there, but it's a non-Jewish Yishuv, Bechurbanam Mikri. The Beis Yosef looks at who's living there. The Bach looks at who owns it. That's the difference. The Beis Yosef says, Kol Shehem Bidei Oevi Gilun. As long as the, the people living there are Goyim, even though they built it up, and it's nice and it's beautiful, but since it's under Goyim, it's Bechurbanam. And the, the Bach says, no. The Bach says, Klor, even if Jews live there, like in Mitzpah, they thought the Jews were still living there. Still, they tore Kriya because it's under Melech Babel. That's the difference. So now let's go back to Ramosha. And the, the British also built it up a little bit. No? Yeah, so if the British built... So listen, this is going to be the Nafkamina. If you have a Jewish city that's under the Arabs, so the, base, the Mishnah Bura said, again, we just read it inside a minute ago, the Mishnah Bura says, Afilu Yosh fin Bohan Yisrael, even if it's a Jewish city, you didn't are living in it, but Kivan Shahi. Given Shahish Me'elim, Moishlim Aleim, since the Arabs are ruling over them, that's called Bechurbanam. Mm-hmm. So who's that like? The Bach. The Mishnabur is like the Bach. But the uh, Reb Moshe, I want to show you that he's not going like the Bach. Why? Because Reb Moshe says, he says the words, Ukesheroim Are Yehuda, Shehem Bishus Ha'umais. The Mermoisha says, if there's a piece of Yerushalayim that's under the nations. What does he mean under the nations? Does he mean the nations are ruling over it? So this tshuva, if you look in the beginning, it was written in, in Tafshin Lamates, 1979. And Mermoisha obviously knew the state of Israel was ruling over Yerushalayim at that time, right? And still, he says, if there's a part of Yerushalayim that's under the nations. What does he mean by that? But it's still under the state of Israel. The, uh, Jerusalem has a Muslim quarter, and mm-hmm. it has a Christian quarter, and it has a, I think, Armenian, yes. and then Jewish quarter. So he says, "Im yesh chelik, im ik chelik Jerusalem." There's a part of Jerusalem that's b'shusu umais. He means like the Muslim quarter. Afim nivnu yafa, even though it's be- be- built up beautifully, tzarich likraya. So but maybe see, Christian quarter, so the Christian quarter, quarter. May yeah, have Christian quarter. property over there, like so, the Holy Sepulchre. So that's the thing. If you see one of those things, you have to tear Kriya, even though it's under the state of Israel. You have to tear Kriya. So who is he going like? Beis Yosef. He's going like the Beis Yosef. That doesn't depend on who owns it, sovereignty. It depends on who lives there. So Kumtois, 
there's no cash on Ramayshah under, under anymore. He's not a Zionist anymore. You're trying to prove from this Ramayshah that he's happy that the state of Israel is ruling over it. Mm-hmm. He doesn't say that. He just says that if, you're, if you see a part of Yushalayim that's under Jews, like the Jewish quarter, don't tear Korea because it's, it's be- be- beautifully built. If you see a part of Yushalayim that's under non-Jews, like the, the sepulcher or the whatever, like you just said, the Christian quarter, then you do tear Korea. Mm-hmm. Ah, it's under the state of Israel. Who cares? State of Israel doesn't make a difference to Elisha. Okay? So that's what I wanted to show you. Okay. Now let's go to the next piece. Um, there's a new chalik of Igris Moshe that came out. Um, here we go. Um, turn the pages. So I have it here. Hmm. So this is in the new Chelu uh, Ches uh, of Igris Moshe, which came out after Yus Nifter, and it's uh, on your. It's called Yoradeya Dalad Similam and Gimel. Im Lil Moed Torah Bi Yeshiva Oily Hisgayes Litzava. Should one learn in Yeshiva or should one go to the army? Say so. Bez Hashem Erev Shabbos Kodesh Yudzayin Sivan Tafshin Mem Aleph. Milas Kavoid Hatalmidim Achashuvim Yeshivas Nisiv Meir Bishlaim, Mar Daniel Kraus, Umar Ofer Tauber. Two Talmidim from a Yeshiva in Yushalayim wrote or Moshe a question whether they should join the army or they should learn in Yeshiva. So he says, Hine Apsha Indian Savar Hagana, the Indian of an army that's for defense, who Indian Godal. It's a big Indian, it's an important thing. Learning Torah is even bigger. It's even bigger than uh, defending the state. It says there, and the small letters are added in by um, the editors to show what, what Ramosha had in mind. The big letters are allegedly Ramosha's own words. Although I'm not so sure about that, but <clears throat> you're trusting them because Ramosha wasn't even alive anymore when they published this, right? But, okay, the small letters he puts in to, to explain the Maramakam. So he says, Maramakam is Akola Egle Gapa. Lashare Choymas Ho'ir. Right, so he quotes a Rashi here. That Rashi says, Lashare Choymas Ho'ir, the gates of the walls of the city, Lahatsif Bohen Dlasois, to put up doors on the walls of the city. Rashi. Okay? So if you have a walled city and you want to collect money, taxes from the inhabitants in order to put up doors on the city. So even the Yisoyimim have to pay. the in the city, They don't need to be protected, so they don't need to pay for the doors on the on the on the on the wall of the city. Okay? So therefore he wants to show from this Gemara that people learning Torah don't need the protection of the army and therefore they're not Mukhuyev to go to the army. It's more important for them to learn Torah. Okay? They don't have to have the protection of the army, so therefore they don't have to they don't have, they don't have to go to it, they can learn Torah. The Kanir he just continues, Shahamem Shalah he kira gam said. He says the government of, of the state of Israel also recognized this uh, concept. Someone who goes to the yeshiva is exempt from army service. At least it was then. Now they changed it. They're working on changing it. Someone has a desire to learn. He wants to become a great person in Torah. He should go to yeshiva. It will be a protection for all of Klal Yisrael. Okay? So this is his tshuva. So the prop- but even the term, <coughs> this term... Uh, 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 where is, where was the Egle Gapa? No, the Medina. I mean, Satmar using, you wanted to use that term of the Haggadah Medina. Okay, so you have to realize, I don't think that the word Medina here means Davka Medina, Sisrael. He means any Medina, mm-hmm. any country. So the Gemara in Bava is not talking about Medina, Sisrael. The Gemara in Bava is talking about a Medina that Jews lived in in Bava, let's say, or anywhere in the world. If, you, if, if you're a Jew living in, uh, in, in Europe or in America, and you have to pay for some kind of defense thing. Now, today, American, uh, they, they just take tax from everybody. They don't care uh, if you're a Talmud Chacham or not. But Al-Pitoira 
if someone, in, a Torah a person is in charge of collecting the tax, he shouldn't collect tax from Talmud Yechamim for defense purposes. That's this Gemara involved Basra. It doesn't mean the Medina of the Tzioinim. And also, the first words of the Tshuva, where he says, Af she'inyan tzva ha'gana, the idea of an army for defense, who inyan gadol. It's a great thing. So it sounds like he's praising the state of Israel. Right. But <coughs> not necessarily. It could be he's talking about Stam an army. Any army that defends people is a great thing. Not going into the Shiloh of Zionism. He doesn't want to confront these people, because these people are obviously religious Zionists. And they want to go to the army. They're considering the Israeli army, right? So Moshe's not confronting them directly mm-hmm. with a, a, an attack on Zionism. He's just saying, you know, okay, you're right. There is such a thing as de- defending a state, defending the country that you live in, and defending people. But learning Torah, you don't need to do that. No, when I was in, I was in New School on Shabbos. <clears throat> just one more point about this, uh, this thing in Baba Basra, that Talmud Yechon Marpater from paying for the, for the defense. It's interesting to note that the Israeli Supreme Court in their decision where they overturned the exemption for army, for, for re- Yeshiva Bachrim. It was Ben Grime who was. Yeah, so it was around for like 40, 50 years, maybe more than that. But uh, not too long ago, maybe 10, 15 years ago, maybe it was more recent. It was like 2013, 14. Uh, I can't remember which year exactly, but the Israeli Supreme Court overturned it. They, they, made, they, they ruled that. So one of the judges in the Supreme Court was named Rubinstein. I'm not sure if he's from or not, but I, I don't remember. I, I looked this up once. But he said in his decision that he wrote about the army, he wrote, he quoted a Redvaz. Redvaz is, um, you know, a poistic from, from uh, Egypt from 600 years ago. And the Redvaz wrote on this Gemara Baba Basra that Talmud Yechon Marpata from, from paying for the Shmir of the city, <coughs> he says that's only if the Talmud Yechon are not the ones who want the Shmir. But if the Talmud Yechamim want the Shmir, if they're voting and they're the ones uh, clamoring for it and saying, put up more guards, put up more locks on the door, then they have to pay for it. Because they want it. You can't tell me they don't need the Shmir. They do want it. They want the Shmir. So Rubenstein says, therefore, the Haredim should go to the army. Why? Because the Haredim also want the Israeli army. You can't tell me they don't want the army. They're in the Knesset. They're voting for the army to go and attack Gaza and attack this and Lebanon and whatever. They, they want the army. Mm-hmm. So don't tell me you don't want the army. You want it. But how about the Arabah who don't need the uh, uh, Right. So they're in the, Although they also may want, they also want the army. I, I don't know. I don't get into that. But anyway, that's a fact. So they do want the army. They they're, do? they're not anti-Zionist. All right, they maybe. Just, okay. Anyway, so the point is, that's what, um, <coughs> so, that's so, what he said. So th- this, this thing, Ramayisha says, the Medina is makir, that eventually the Medina woke up and realized <laughs> these people are cheating us. They, they want the army and they just don't want to join that's it. Right. They just sit and, and learn. All right. Okay, now the last quote from Ramayisha that we're going to do today is from a sefer called Mesoyeris Moshe. So turn to somewhere in the pile here. Soros Moshe is a sefer that came out just recently. There's like three volumes of it already. And it has the different stories about Ramosha that were recorded in a notebook by his, the his grandson. Was that his grandson. Yeah, I think so. So his grandson, Ramon Chetendler, uh, who was like a mashamish with him, he, mm-hmm. you know, he took care of him and everything and, 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 and wrote down his chuvas. And also he, he had a notebook where whenever something happened in Ramosha's house, he took notes. So here's what he says. Rabbeinu Kara, this is Mesoris Moshe, Krach Aleph, Volume 1, Shar Chamishi, Ois Reish Mem Gimel, Ha'arach Kuf Chav Gimel, Amud Tav Kuf Tzadik Aleph. He, he wrote this tender? Tender, yeah. So he says, Rabbeinu Kara Be'iton Shal Chuge HaKanoim. Moshe read a newspaper by a, 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 a sect of zealots. Which doesn't, one? Doesn't say, but I have a feeling it might be either... Um, Chama? Well, it might be Achoima, or maybe it's their Yid. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what it is. But he says, Shekhoisfim Kedarkam Shechabad Apikorsim. They write that Chabad are Apikorsim. Why? Mitzad Shaloi Choshim Le'inyan Shal Agimel Shvuas. Because they don't care about the Shal Shvuas. Shaloi Lalos Bechoima Vechadoima. The Omar Abenu, so Ramosha said, Shazep Plia. He says, I can't believe it. How could you just use the word apikoris so easily? 
If someone keeps the mitzvahs, he keeps the hashkafas that are mentioned as being like ma'akiv. How could you call him an apikoyres just because he violates the, the three oaths? <laughs> Why is it such a big deal, the three oaths? It's only mentioned in the Gemara. It's not mentioned in Shulchan Aruch. Most of the Rishonim don't say anything about the Shal Shkuas. So Roim, we see from this, It's not one of the fundamental uh, principles. Rav Yisrael in his appendix disagrees with that, the three oaths through time. Yeah, well, it's definitely true that the three oaths were kept throughout history. Right, he has... Okay, and there are Rishonim that mention it. Ramesh is just saying that most Rishonim, the ones that we, we generally find are in, you know, in Shulchan Aruch, don't mention it. So Roim, we see, She'enoi me'ikrei hayadus, it's not one of the, the fundamentals of Yiddishkeit. Uvchlauzeh davar she'ef. He says uvchlau. He says besides the whole three oaths is a zed davar she'ef she lefarshay k'moish roitzim. You could explain it however you want. Umashayich lasos apikoyish bishlozeh. So how could you call someone an apikoyish because you have this point of view? <laughs> then he says v'gam al mizrachi sheyesh shekorim lehem apikoyishim. Some people call uh, the mizrachists apikoyishim. He says, "Ef shakach lahagi." You can't say that. The enam oivri mal ikre hayadus. They don't uh, transgress fundamental yiddishkeit. The osterli shtamish kol kach bekalus b'shem askoel. You can't throw around names like apikoyus. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I just want to comment on this, Reb Moshe. So, so this is Rabbi Tenler saying, in Rabbi yeah, Moshe. Rabbi Tenler is saying over a story that he remembers from Reb Moshe. That's what he claims. So, however reliable that is, take it with a grain. He himself is mizrachi, no? I don't know what he is. His know. father's uh, in the Yeshiva universe. Yeah. He went to the Temple Mount. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Even Cook want to go up to the Temple Mount. Tzvi Yehuda want to go up to the Temple right. Mount. Rabbi Avina doesn't go up to the Temple Mount. But Father Yosef has a Yeshiva okay. on it. Yeah, I know. Okay, so let's get to the point. So I want to say a couple things about this Ramosha. First of all, let's take it apart, what he says here. I, for, the, one claim is that you can't call a Zionist an Apikoyers. The second claim is that the shvuas are something that you could explain however you want, which I guess some people would take to mean, yeah, okay, Ramosha held that there's no real psak on the shal shvuas. You could explain however you want. You could say it's mutter. You could say it's oster. I don't think that's what he meant. If he really said all this stuff, I don't think he meant that. I think what he meant is that since the shal shvuas is not a clear sugya, and that's true, undeniably, you can write in books and books about the shal shvuas. There's many different and it's, it, there is a, it's a difficult subject, right? Mm-hmm. So there is a makam for people to make, to make a mistake in the this, in, in this sugya and explain it however they want. If someone has a taiva to be a Zionist, he'll find a way to explain the Shal Shavuot. We know that, right? Mm-hmm. So, therefore, you can explain it however you want, so how could you call a guy an apikoris for that? And this is what he means. He means like this. If sometimes you have a, a principle that the etzim is apikoresis, but if someone holds that point of view, he's not an apikoresis. Why is that? Why is that? Because he made a mistake. There's such a thing as being an apikoresis by mistake. <laughs> now, he wrote the last two volumes on Zibros Moshe? There is, you mean Igris Moshe? Oh, yeah, like so this is from, the, this is not even from Igris Moshe, this is from a notebook, I told you, this is a Mesoros Moshe. Oh, and this it's is a, from him, the grandson. It's from the grandson, yeah. Okay, so um, I want to show you the, what's the makar for this idea that you can be an apikoris b'shoigig. So, first let's look at the famous Rambam and Ravid. Rambam hilchis tshuva per gimel halacha zayin. Okay? Chamisha hein ani kroim minim. There are five people who are called minim. Ho'aymer she'ein shom zayin. Halacha zayin. Someone who's an atheist. Someone who believes in God. He believes in two gods. Someone who believes in one master of the world. He believes that God is a body. Okay? So let's stop right there. So, Dr. Ravid. 
Amr Avram, the Lama Kar Lazeb Min. Why does the Rambam call such a person a heretic? The Kama Gadoil and the Toivim Mimenu. Many greater people than the Rambam, Halku Bizu Hamachshava. They thought this. They thought that Hashem has a body. The Fima Shiro Bimi Christ. Because they saw Psukim that indicate so. The Psukim say Yad Hashem and Ene Hashem. They saw even more things in, in the Chazal, which confused the mind. So because they saw Psukim and they saw Agadata that indicates Hashem is, is corporeal, that's why they thought that He's corporeal. So it's wrong. The Rav is agreeing to the Rambam that it's wrong, but he's saying that, that if, if someone thinks that, you shouldn't call him a heretic. Okay? So Lechoyer, you see here, Machlech is the Rambam and the Ravid. The Rambam holds that someone who's a heretic by accident, because he made a mistake in Pshat, he learned a Pasuk, or he learned a Chazal, and he, he learned it wrong. He's a heretic, but he's a heretic by mistake, right? So the Rambam holds, he's a min, that's it, he's out. Out of Kla Yisrael. No chelik lo'elam haba. And the Ravid says, no, he is, he's, he's excused, excused for his mistake, Okay? Mm-hmm. But take a look at this Rilochanan. Rilochanan, Chayvitz Ma'amorim, on this, on this Machlech, is Rambam and Ravid. He says, Das HaRambam, De Hamamin Behakshamu Humin. The Rambam holds that someone who believes in the corporealness of the corporeality of Hashem is a heretic. The Ravid Kosev, Shigadoyal and Vitoyim Tov Bozeh. The Ravid says, No, many people made this mistake. The Shamati B'Shem Kvoid Moreno Hagrach Halevi Zatzal Mi Brisk. The Reb Chaim Brisker said, "B'Das Rambam." He said, "Pshat in the Rambam." Ki B'Kfir Eloi Shaych Shoigeg. You can't be a mistaken heretic. The Ha Mikomakum Eino Mamin, because the, the, the end of the day you don't believe, so it doesn't matter if it's a mistake. You just you just, you just don't believe. The Ef Shalio is Bechalis Dura Beloy Amuna. You can't be part of Chalis Dura if you don't have Amuna. They say over in the name of Reb Chaim, Dervos is Nebuch Apikoyers, is Oicha Apikoyers. Someone who's not Apikoyers just because he unfortunately made a mistake, is still an Apikoyers. And seemingly, he's right. You're going to tell me that this guy who made a mistake about, about corporeality is going to get it passed, right? Because he'll tell... The Bez and Shema, look, I, I made a mistake, right? Let me into Olam Haba. So if that's the case, then every Kaifer will say the same thing. An atheist will come up after 120, mm-hmm. and God will say to him, oh, you see, you were wrong, right? So the atheist will say, what, what am I supposed to do? I made a mistake, right? Let me into Gan Eden. Obviously, the Apikorsim aren't just doing it because they want to pretend to be Apikorsim. They really believe it. Because you see that some of them do avoid the Zara and they sacrifice their kids to an idol. And, and still, the Torah punishes them with death. They can't, they can't come with an excuse that they thought it was right. Now, a little baby, he also doesn't believe. But I'm not amazing in the crib. In, yeah, in the crib. Uh, and but still a baby, even though he doesn't believe because he doesn't know anything yet, he's still part of Klal Yisrael. There's a din that a, a mummer doesn't bring a carbon. If a mummer makes a mistake and is Machal Shabbos, he doesn't bring a carbon. Because he would do it anyway. We say, you're a mummer, you're a Mechal Shabbos anyway. So now, punk, now you want to bring a carbon for being Mechal Shabbos because you thought that it was Sunday and you did something and you thought you, you want to bring a carbon? No, you can't do that because even if you would have known it was Shabbos, you don't bring a carbon. Mashenken, you would have done it anyway. Mashenken over here, let's say a guy grew up in a non, non-religious home and he became from, so the Gemara says he brings a carbon. We see from this the honors Rachmona Patre, Gam Bechisar and Amuna. Even though his problem was the lack of Amuna, the Torah Patre them. So that's Rabbi Khan's Kasha. He says like this: V'yesh Loimar, the Fiyah Mavur Lamaila. According to what I said earlier, Ki Yisoide O Amuna Muchrachim V'Dasu Adam Mitzalatz Maloiti Tein Malkim Lekvir. He says, "That's um, it makes sense to believe in the Creator of the world, because where else did the world come from?" Barak rotten ha'adam lipikas oil. 
The only reason why people are atheists is because they want to do a virus and they have a taiva and that influences their judgment and they make a mistake about the moon. And therefore, a person who's poirik oil because he wants to, to do a, what do you call it? He wants to do a virus, he is punished for his mistake. But someone who thinks that it's mutter to do a is a shaygeg. He's, 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 he's not punished. Because he thinks he's doing what the Torah wants. He says like this. Here's the word. I'll just say it outside because it's kind of hard to understand what Rebbe Chalman means here. But he, what he means is that when, when a guy decides on his own to be a kaifer, right? Let's say he's, he's sitting in his house. He knows what the Torah says already. But he decides, you know what? The Torah is not true. And I'll go and, and, uh, and do an Aveyor because he wants to do the Aveyor. So he can't come with a tiny that he's an honest because he did it because of his taiva. But let's say someone looks into the Torah and he opens up the Sefer and he says, oh, it says here, whatever, that Hashem has a body, right? And he thinks Hashem has a body because the Torah says so. <laughs> then he gets a pass. That's what the Ravid says. Shetu'usam eno matmidas atzmon. It's not because of their own mind that they made a mistake. They think to themselves, I'm nothing. I'm not going to make a decision on my own. I'm going to believe whatever it says here in the Torah or in the Chazal. That's called Oymer Mutter. When you think that the Torah is Matir, what you do, that's called Oymer Mutter. The Chashiv Shkaga Gam Bikfira. And that's considered a shagi given by Kfira. Um, okay? And let's see what he says here. The Tisyashiv He says, according to this, we can answer another Kasha. Mashemak Shemihad de Omer of Hillel. Ein Mashiach Lisrael. There's a famous Gemara in Sanhedrin Sadiq Tess. It says, Reb Hillel, the Amoyer Reb Hillel, uh, didn't believe in Mashiach, right? He says, Ein Mashiach Lisrael Shekvar Chlubi Me Chizkia. They already benefited from from Mashiach in the time of Chizkiah, and that's it, we don't have Mashiach anymore. In so, Hillel, that's okay? Hillel, no, this is from Hillel the Amoyer, from the time of Ravashi, or a little earlier than that. So the Gemara says, Rabbi Yosef said, Sharei le mara, mara le Rabbi Hillel. May Hashem forgive Rabbi Hillel for saying this, because it's, it's not true. So the Gemara comes out very clearly that Rabbi Hillel was wrong. So the question is, how could Reb Hillel be completely out of Kla Yisrael? He denied one of the 13 principles of Amunah. But according to what we said, we can answer, Reb Hillel made a mistake in the Pasuk. He learned up a Pasuk by Chizkiah and that caused him to make his, his mistake. He said, Hashem should forgive him because, why? Because he, he made an honest mistake. The Das Rambam, the Rambam holds, He says, when it comes to corporeality, he says, I agree, Reb Hillel made an honest mistake. He's going to get excused. But a mistake about the corporeality, that, that's Boami Das Atzman. That people think on their own. If someone would have a clear mind, they wouldn't be confused by the Agadata. They wouldn't understand the Agadata and the Shas to be, to be say, saying something that's against uh, common sense. So, the Rambam and the Ravid are not really arguing in such a fundamental thing. They're arguing in Hakshama whether the person got his mistake from the from the Pasuk or from his own mind. Mm. But the Etzim, the Rambam also agrees that if a person made a mistake based on his understanding of the Torah or of Chazal, then he's Shoygik. Mm. He's off the hook. So this thing that Reb Chaim said, Derbos is Nebuch HaPikoyos, Oich HaPikoyos, is not always true. Right? Comes out, if someone's Nebuch HaPikoyos because he understood the Torah that way, even the Rambam would agree that he is Potter from the punishment of an HaPikoyos. So, Mela, um, coming back to our Sugit here, Zionism. Ramosha says, you can't say an Apikoyos 
You can't call a Zionist to not be Koyers, right? Moshe Feinstein. Moshe Feinstein, yeah. I mean, or his grandson claims it. His grandson claims he said it. But let's say he said it. Let's assume he said it. But I don't think that's such a big problematic assertion. I think even Satan Rebbe would agree to that too. Because even though the Satan Rebbe has a whole safer explaining why Zionism is Kfira, that doesn't mean that a particular person, a Zionist, is a Koyfer. That particular person could be Shoigeg. I don't know. We can't judge. We don't know what's going on in everybody's mind. And why. Satan Rebbe imposed it in his safer Torah Salah if he says anybody. He has a, like just a slightest sign of from the existing state that this is pure heresy and idolatry. Right. Well, the, the thought and the idea is heresy. The question is, how are we going to judge the person? What do we call that person? Is he excluded from... Let's say, for example, let's say he touches wine. Are you allowed to drink the wine? If he shechts uh, an animal... Uh, are you but don't you hear that the from the Shinova Rebbe that the Yain Carmel is Yain Esach? Better to drink from tray for wine than yarn. Okay, I don't know. Maybe he held that way. I don't know. Maybe these people were. You have that in your person. book. Yeah, I don't know. And I think Rabbi Leitner. Uh, right, that's a good point. I think Rabbi Leitner also held. That's a good point. But Rabbi Leitner held that you can't drink wine that the Zionist ever touched. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. maybe. Okay, I have to do but double the, check. Okay, but, I but think this he is. He used to drink his own harm. So maybe he was choishish. Maybe that doesn't mean that every drink. Zionist is the same. Maybe there's some that are and some that aren't. You know, the point is you can't make a blanket statement that they're all apicarsim because it could be some of them have this, have this misunderstanding that led them to their mistake. And just one more maramakam on this. Um, we saw this once before, but I'll just look at it one more time. Maimashal Shvus Membeis. Very important simon. Maimashal Shvus Membeis. And he's talking about the Kfir of Zionism, and he says like this: "The Ein Sofik, the second paragraph. The Ein Sofik she'ein chiluk be'er Oh, you're on you're on the wrong page. Here we go. Oh, Membe. The Ein Sofik. There is no doubt she'ein chiluk be'er ha'koyfer b'havtacha zu she'iyev she'legula b'li tshuva. He says the Rambam says that before Mashiach comes, all of Klal Yisrael will do tshuva. Or before they get redeemed, not before Mashiach comes, but before they come back to Eretz Yisrael, there's going to be tshuva. So if someone denies this and he thinks you can make a Zionist movement and gather Klal Yisrael to Eretz Yisrael without tshuva, he says there's no difference between the koifer and this. Or someone who denies Bias Mashiach. The Adarabah, who garua yoiser, he's even worse. Shahari Bir, Harchasam Soifer, Bechelik Yordea, Simon Shin Nunvav, Sheme Iker Asfara. The Chasam Soifer says that that's an EF Sherloy Marsha Gula who echoed me Ikri Adas. He says the belief in Mashiach and the Gula is not really one of the, one of the principles of the Avamuna. She Ilu Haya Chasvishalam Chatuene Garmim, she Garish Son and Girish Oilam. That if uh, if Chas uh, Shalom, we would never get back from Gaulus, right? Would it then be allowed to go and throw away all the mitzvahs? To change any mitzvah, even the rabbanon. Therefore, to 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 believe in Mashiach and believe in Gula is not really a foundation in, in Yiddishkeit. Because the, the Chassam Soif defines the foundation is something that if you take that away, then there won't be Yiddishkeit. Let's say you take away Hashem, take away the Torah. Yeah, you can't have Yiddishkeit without Hashem and the Torah. But let's say you say, yeah, Hashem exists, the Torah is true, but we'll never get back from exile. Do you think that's going to change anything? We'll still have to keep the Yiddishkeit. So therefore, it's not a fundamental thing. Since you do have to believe in the Torah, and there the, the Torah does say the Gula, the Parashat Nisavim, someone who denies the Gula, he's denying the Torah. So in the Chanami, that itself is not a fundamental thing, but since he's denying what it says, therefore he's, he's a, 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 a Koifer in the Torah. Just like if, if someone would deny that there's, there's a Mabo, or someone would deny that there was an Avram Avinu, right? Mm-hmm. It's not a, a fundamental, but since it's written in the Torah, you deny it. So that's clear. Yuyin Sham Sheherich Bidvarim Burim. So the rabbi gives his uh, approval to this, Chassam Soifer. He says, when we call Shekane, Ba'koifer Ba'avtach Azu, 
Therefore, all the more so, if you say there could be Geula without Tshuva, now that you say that, you're not only denying a Pasuk, but why, why are you saying it? You're saying because you want to be a Zionist. A Zionist is someone who takes matters into his own hands. Right? So that... That's the Likach Lats Megula Melucha Terem Migia Esa Kates, who in Yen Shal Kvir Rachman Alisan. That itself is an idea of Kvir. Mm-hmm. So the Rebbe built his Kvir of Zionism, his idea of Zionism being Kvir, he built it on this Bias HaMashiach, right? And the Chsam Soifer. Well, the Chsam Soifer says, what's Bias HaMashiach? It's not an Iker, it's like the Mabul, it's like Avram Avinu. If you don't believe what's written in a certain place in the Torah, you're a Kvir. Mm-hmm. But when? Only when you know it's written there. But let's say a Zionist opens up Mesech Teksubas and he thinks the Shal Shavuos means something different. He, like Ramosha says, Efshel Afarsh Kamosha writes him. He can explain it away any way he wants. So he says, oh yeah, the Shal Shavuos just means Eitz uh, Toiva. <laughs> One of the Zionists says. Or it just means as long as the nations don't let us. Once the UN comes and says we can do it, then you can do it. Whatever you want to say. You know, whole market of Islay, according to whatever territory you pick. Pick one. So once a Zionist says that, he doesn't realize what it says in the Torah. So he's not a kaifer anymore. He's, a, he's saying kfira, but he's not a kaifer personally because he doesn't know that what he's saying is kfira. So that's what I want to show you. That even, what did you say? Either that, or even if he's not a Tinochnespa, even if he, he came to believe it on his own, but he thinks that that's the, the real pshat in the, in the, in the Gemara. So if he thinks that's the real shot, honestly, you have to know, honestly, like Rebbe says, it depends if it's a taiva or not. If, if he's a Baal taiva, he loves the idea of the army and he loves the idea of the Israeli uh, sovereignty and you know the Jewish state and all that stuff and that makes him happy and the, sees a flag and makes him proud. If that's what he is, okay, then it's different. But let's say he really is an honest Talmud Chacham and he opens up the sugi and he learns it up that way and he learns it wrong, so he's, he picked a, a, a point of view that's clear, but mm-hmm. you can't blame him for it. Only Hashem knows what's in people's hearts. But what I want to show you with this Qasam Soifer is that even though the Qasam Soifer says there are certain principles like the existence of Hashem, the existence of the Torah, that's untouchable. That's a foundation. There it could be the Qasam Soifer will be moida that if someone made a mistake there, it's Nebuch Apikoros is also an Apikoros. If it's about time, it's less evil. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, but, but no, for care. Well, Khanan says about Taiva. If he made his decision to be a kaifer because of his taiva, then he's blamed for it. Well, but I thought if he believes in something, then it's worse, no? Apparently not. Apparently it works the other right. way around. That if someone is about taiva, and he, he you, what, you, what you mean to say is like this. Let's say he believes Zionism is wrong, and he believes the state of Israel is wrong, but he can't help himself and he does it because of his taiva. That's what you mean. That's taka less, less bad. Right. Because he's a maimin, and he believes in everything, but he just can't help himself. Okay? Right. Like someone who believes in the Torah, but he does have errors, right? Mm-hmm. But here, let's say a guy doesn't believe in the Torah. But because he has a taiva, that's, the, that's what, what the kaifer, that, that classic case of a kaifer is. Mm-hmm. Can a, a guy who honestly thinks the Torah means what he thinks, then, yeah, then, that, then that's different. Well, that's the rivet. What I was just saying from this the Chassam Soifer is that even if you say in principles of Hashem and the Torah, you could say that, yeah, someone who's at Nebuch Apikoros is also not Apikoros, but when it comes to this, the Geula and Zionism, there's a special reason to say that a Koifer is not really called a Koifer because he thinks that that's what it means. Like the Chassam Soifer says himself, he says if someone denies it, he's only an Apikoros because he's denying what it says in the Torah. But if he doesn't know that the Torah says that, then he's not an Apikoros. <clears throat> All right, we'll stop for the day.